Drive Away Dolls, the newest movie from the Cohen brother, now that they've kind of <laughs> split. And uh, it was funny as we were like looking up all of our stuff. How many like metaphors or not, or not like puns you could do? Mm hmm. Two brothers that are no longer together who made a movie called Oh Brother Where Art Thou and damn does one no longer have the funny and the other one maybe is too goofy. I was not expecting the new Cohen brother movie to have iMovie transitions. That's where I'm going to start at, Zach. <laughs> what were your thoughts on Drive Away Dolls? You know, it, it is really funny, as you mentioned, that like. It, there is such a stark contrast between Ooh. the Ethan Cohen movie we just got and the Joel Cohen movie that we got previously, Tragedy and Macbeth. Uh, it's always sort of been fascinating to watch them operate and, you know, curious to find out, like, who's responsible for what or, you know, are they do they have like kind of one shared brain or something like that? Yeah. And it's very clear. No, they are bringing two different skill sets yeah. uh, to the table uh, with Joel Cohen being a, a, a lot more like artistly artistly and like very into the camera and the visual presentation uh, of his films. Uh, it's a lot more self-serious tragedy Macbeth. And with Ethan making driveway dolls, this is just like a, a goofy, fun, pretty good time. It's a very slack movie and, and not right? really like something that I think holds together under much weight. But at the same time, I had like a lot of fun just sort of hanging out with it. Um, it, it, but it really does feel like I, I hate to be so reductive about it, but it kind of feels like they did half of the movie, right? Like they're they're missing the Joel Cohen half of this movie. Look, we're so used to that that, yeah, I think you were saying who's got what juice when they bring in and wh when do they make that complete meal? We can go mm -hmm. down here and realize like, yeah, this, this looks like a Joel movie, right? <laughs> This is a little mixture of them both. This is yep. definitely Ethan. Like, you can now play this game, this, like, almost bingo <laughs> thing over or under it's, on, like, who got a little bit of it. It's also funny to sort of go back through their movies and be like, okay, uh, the white picket fence thing in A Serious Man, you can see that in Driveway yep. Dolls, too. Yep. The uh, obsession with marital aids that we see in Burn After Reading pops oh, up here, too. we will get too. into that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, even the breaking of the fourth wall. Yeah, can you not say that phrase? There's a specific very Fargo-like <laughs> phrase that's yep. said early on. And I, I, don't, I, I really liked how, how open he was with the movie. I saw it by the midway through uh, as a good point. I thought the transitions that he was making, I thought the goofiness of it. I know you're saying that maybe some of the plot doesn't hold... Under some way, I, I'm curious what parts, because I actually thought that the goofiness of it kind of worked. Yeah, I mean, th the thing is, it's really goofy, and it's such a fun time. I just don't know if, like, the, you know, crime element of it, the hit, the tracking them down element of it feels fully fleshed out. You know, It's sort of like a lark, which is not a bad thing. I don't think it's mm -hmm. necessarily trying to be this like very self-serious. It's very, definitely not trying to be a very self-serious movie. You don't see Raising Arizona movie. like that? No, I mean, that's, that's, there, there's well, elements of that in some also, of their, yes. yeah, exactly. There's elements so of that have in some of their previous films. It's just the way that it feels kind of slapdash how, how like, you know, I, I think I, it feels, especially given that it's, you know, barely making it to 90 minutes long. It's a pretty <laughs> slight yeah. movie, but it almost also feels almost like scenes were cut out parts where there were, they could have developed the relationships more or the dynamics more or gone deeper into the world. They just kind of said, eh, we're not really interested in that. And, and it's not something that I think the movie necessarily needs or is aiming for, but it's something that might have made it feel less like, uh, less like a diversion, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. kind of a fun time and it kind of, it maybe could have been a little bit more than that, right? Cause it's had, has this really interesting period setting. It's sort of at the dawn of this new age of political, uh, of, 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 yeah, 99, the, it, it's right before the, uh, Bush Gore election. You, you have, uh, you have an actor coming in playing this Republican politician as well. Um, and, and also the sort of way that they depict, uh, LGBT rights at this point in time in the country. I, I think it's just a, there's a lot of interesting stuff there that maybe could have felt a little bit uh, full, more fully realized, but I was laughing a lot with it. I think the performances are really fun. I'm not sure whether or not uh, Margaret, Margaret Qualley's 
southern accent is like better or worse than Rachel Zegler's in the uh, Hunger Game movies, but she, it's a really fun performance, and I really worse. like. <laughs> I really like how she just fully commits to a character. Yeah. You have to be a really fun actress to carry that thing as a third passenger in the car. That yeah. accent was struggling at the diner. <laughs> it was going one way. She was going the other. But, like, she delivers this energy of this person who, uh, from the beginning of the movie, is not necessarily the most faithful person. Uh, they're going all around town for the most part, kind of knowing every single lesbian bar, and she's trying to bring her friend, who's a little bit more uptight, the person that they're trying to say, like, yo, you know, dress more casually, just be, you know, go out there and be with other people since it seems mm-hmm. you've been very closed. They're the complete opposites, and I think that that part of the road trip movie really worked for me, especially when that's juxtaposed with them taking a car that was meant for these two other dummies who are mm-hmm. kind of like the inverse of them as well, but as men who aren't really, really, uh, not to get into too much spoilers, but they're almost paralleling a lot of the scenes together. And that could mm-hmm. also be why it feels so short because you're just seeing the same scene again. And then there's a psychedelic bit. You're right. seeing them do these goofy bits as they're trying to get down to Tallahassee. And then you get some of the wackiest transitions, dude. I have to bring <laughs> up some of the stuff that we had here because I could not believe what they were playing with here. Mm-hmm. Right off the bat, some of the transitions that I had here. Were you a fan of the iMovie Slate? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm a fan of it all, I think. I counted about 14, 15. There was one where a car gets into a pothole and it rubbles into the next scene. Like, y'all think it's like a couple? We're talking it's more apparent than a Star Wars George Lucas movie. Yeah. He tried everyone in the book and, and I had a blast with it. Yeah, here's the thing. It's that, like... Yeah, they kind of can come across pretty goofy and pretty cheesy, but if it's sort of a match for the tone of the movie, then it works. And I think it sort of adds to the the loose nature of this film. It, it, it's not taking itself seriously. It's really just trying to uh, be like a fun time. It, it adds to the world. You know, there's all those like psychedelic transition moments that, that kind of uh, bring you from one sequence to the next. And I'm not so sure how much it feels yeah. like apt given that this isn't Cohesive. like exactly like a, a druggy movie, but right. Cause it, it, in the middle of the movie, it shifts that tone. Right. And you're yeah. like, okay, if it was here the whole time, that'd be kind of cool. It does kind of jump around. I'll, I'll give you that one. Um, did you like the actress who was used for the psychedelic uh, scenes? I, I thought it was pretty funny. I, for some reason, I feel like she's in trailers. I don't know if it's a... Uh... Oh, I, so I didn't know going in. Yeah. But I D- did stay for the after credits and found out that the character that they're playing mm-hmm. is a real person. I did not yeah. know that, so I still got to... Plaster <laughs> Dive in there and see. Uh, <laughs> for, for research purposes. Research um, only. But I will say this. Out of all the transitions, my favorite one, there is a traffic headlight coming at one of the characters' passenger seat. And it cuts to Beatty doing her flashlight, looking into one of the places. Bro, that is one of the best transitions of the year. Yeah. To me, Ethan, I-, I like it when it's you and your brother because I think you guys really create something special. And without each other, you can see the things that are missing in what we know as a Coen Brothers movie. But I, I still respect that. I, I still see what you have going here. And I find it just hilarious that the guy who made No Country for Old Men, a movie you and I discussed in length, and I thought was a great discussion with you, mm-hmm. made this movie. <laughs> And I love that. Yeah. I think it's great. Ethan, keep doing you. Definitely. We should also shout out uh, his, his co-writer and his co-producer and his Tell co-editor, me. I believe. His wife, yeah, Trisha Cook. For this one. Uh, for this one. Who's also been a associate editor or, or I think even Since a co-editor on a couple day, yeah. uh, Cohen film or a few Cohen films, we should say. And this is a script that they've been kicking around since at least the mid-2000s. Yeah. There's a version of this that was supposed to go into production with like Chloe Sevigny, I, I believe, around oh, 2007. That would have been cool. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it's funny for a film that has been kicking around as long as it is, how kind of like, uh, you know, just sort of like carefree it feels. It doesn't feel yeah. labored over, but I'm glad they made it. I, I have a really, I had a really good time with it. I understand the people who are kind of like, what did I watch? This isn't, this is like barely a story, but I, I think like almost every scene made me laugh. Uh, we haven't mentioned Bill. Can- well, we didn't mention Geraldine, Geraldine Viswanathan by name. Uh, we've mentioned her a lot in previous uh, podca- podcasts because we like her a lot in Bad Education, uh, Hala, some other films that she Blockers. shown up in. Blockers, very good here as well. Uh, but in the story, Sorry, I thought Bill Camp was hilarious okay. as Curly. Dude. Thank you for bringing it up. I thought the line in the trailer was like cute. 
Yeah. What would you say his name was? Oh, Bill Camp. Bill Camp. He's like the heart of the movie. There is yeah. one line he says where he questions himself and he goes, why Bill? <laughs> <laughs> the emotion. He carries it through. Yeah, he was really why great. Charlie Coleman Domingo was also fantastic. Yeah. You had a, a couple of other cameos in there as well. You had mentioned the guy who technically plays the politician. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I was reading into it about him and his wife and you were saying that there's some elements in here uh, dealing with... You know, relationships and such, and especially in a serious man, something yep. that has been a through line, right? Uh, I got you one of these first and foremost. Oh, uh, they beautiful. were giving these out Thank at you. the screening. These are massive, bro. These are like really big posters, and on, uh, it was really pushing her. That's why immediately Boom. I went, Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, thank you. I immediately went over to um, the what's it called? Uh, IMDb to search her up to see everything else that she had done because they were really pushing. Like, I barely see that writer producer it's usually you know writer director something yeah they got a lot to push for her and i was reading up an interview with them bro they're in an open marriage which hey hey hey, i just like knowing the filmmaking process for where a lot of these ideas come so me watching a serious man yesterday eye opening i will say that so hey shout out you two as creatives it, it certainly casts a new light over a lot of the things that we've heard in certain coen brothers movies a little bit but uh, yeah, fascinating overall. I, I would still say that it's worth the junior price if you can catch it as a man. And I still think it's worth the theater experience for the transitions and the way that it's shot. And I, I, I like the cast involved. So I give it a thumbs up for me. Yeah, I would say the same. Uh, I think it's, you know, not a, not like one of the best movies of the year, but a really good time worth worth catching. Not intolerable cruelty. <laughs> no, no. Well, Although, okay. <laughs> you know, I was doing my Coen Brothers rankings because uh, we are going to be doing a longer Coen Brothers uh, podcast very soon. And it is like pretty much no, close to the bottom. Like there's intolerable cruelty and lady killers below it. But like, I think their solo efforts only go to show you that like, they're really oh, at their best when they're mixing their talents. You have this one at the bottom. Really? Well, no, no, no. Below, I have it below. I have it above uh, lady killers and intolerable two. cruelty. And the bottom half one, for sure for you. At least one other Coen brothers movie. Okay. Um, but it's like still in the bottom half of the pro- films they've produced, and they've produced a lot of great films. I think I like it more than Hail Caesar. I mean, yeah, that's the other Coen Brothers okay. film that I have. I right, just want to make sure. I think that was the only one that I'm like, I, yes. I, I, I like this side of uh, him more. So yeah, that is Drive Away Dolls playing in theaters now. Should be in virtual maybe soon, considering how they flip them really pretty quick. So within a month, yeah. if you want to catch it at home, you'll be able to catch it at home. 